I, uh, I'm super excited for this one, mainly because I, I'm sure as everyone on this call, which we'll do some polls and we'll find out here. And as I'm sure Destiny knows, because she's been joining us, but CPC's customer acquisition costs, specifically on Amazon, total nightmare. Uh, absolutely getting out of hand. There's obviously a ton of stuff that you can do to improve it, but we wanted to focus on today is a lot of stuff that you can do off Amazon. So today we're going to focus on seven different strategies uh, that you can do from an off Amazon aspect to grow your Amazon business. And then of course, we're going to also touch on once that uh, traffic does actually come to your Amazon store, how to make sure that you're getting them to convert, whether it's from a CRO side or of course from display ads, retargeting, et cetera. But give you all of an insight myself i am andrew maffetone i am the founder uh here at blue tusker we are a full service marketing company specifically for e-commerce sellers and we do this stuff all day long which is why i was really excited to do this and then of course i am joined by the delightful destiny from better ams destiny would you like to tell everyone a little bit more about yourself yeah of course well one thank you so much for having me we are super excited to be here uh I am the CEO of Better AMS. We we manage around $70 million worth of spend right now. And our core focus is truly advertising. So when Andrew reached out about this webinar, it was absolutely perfect because this is a conversation we're having to have with our brands nonstop. It's like, do you either pay to play for that really expensive real estate at the top of the page? Or do you lower your bids and lower your traffic? Or do you diversify off platform and figure out where your cost per acquisition balances out? So I'm going to be taking notes over here, going to be sending this to all of our brands because this is going to help me do my job better because this is not my skill set in the first half you're covering. Yep. But that's where we we connect really well because I bring them to uh, I bring them into Destiny's wheelhouse and she gets them to close. So we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> lock up this funnel today. Uh, so today, just a quick, quick recap um, about some stuff we're going to go over. We'll obviously go over all seven strategies. We're going to figure out, show you how to figure out which strategy is best for you because not not all seven are great for every brand. Sometimes there's only a couple things that might be best. Um, how to implement and actually track those results. Uh, the tech stack that it takes to, requ- uh, to actually put that together. How to get them all to work together. And then, of course, Destiny is going to also walk through how to make sure that you don't lose them once they actually get to Amazon. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. There is a chat uh, up on the right side of the webinar for you. At any given point, feel free to ask any questions. There's a chat option. There's also a Q&A side. Pick one. They're kind of the same. Um, but we'll we'll go through and try to make sure we answer as many questions as we can throughout the webinar. However, I will note, I get super excited about this stuff, and I talk like a mile a minute, and I also try to leave some time at the end so that we have some Q&A. So if I'm going too fast, you want me to go back to something just put it in there, message it, and we'll go back. Or at worst case scenario, we'll make sure to touch base on the end of it. Um, and then, of course, at the end, I obviously want to thank everyone for joining us. So we obviously here at Blue Tusker, we do a lot of listing optimizations, focus on a lot of CRO stuff, because if we're driving all that traffic to Amazon, we want to make sure that it actually converts. Uh, so we use a specific spreadsheet for our listing optimizations here. And I'm going to make sure that everyone at the end of this webinar has access to it. So I'm going to send that over towards the end. And... We're going to give two listing optimizations and A-plus content stuff away. Uh, so what I'm going to do is at the end, I'm going to tell you guys how to uh, basically submit for that. And we're going to give away two of those towards the end here. So just make sure you stick around. I'll probably fly through this. So think about it, in about 40 minutes, we'll probably do that giveaway here. Quick thing we're going to do real quick before we get moving. We're going to start this quick little poll. Uh, so you'll see up on the right-hand side, I just uh, launched a quick little poll for you. It is, are you currently driving traffic to your Amazon business from off Amazon? So I want to get a little bit of insight from everyone here right now, which I need to publish it. That would help. <clears throat> now you should see it. Uh, so that will uh, give us a little bit of insight here into who's joining us. If you've tried driving traffic directly to Amazon from off Amazon before or not, uh, give you guys a couple minutes here to answer this poll. Looks like we're at 80 20 split right now. So it's a lot of people who haven't even tried this before. Um, that's going to be fun. So you're all going to love this. 84, 73, 80. Yeah, it looks like we're going to land in like the 80 percentile of most people here have not tried this. So in any way, shape, or form, uh, we're getting lower. We're in the 70s. Maybe I should just stop talking, see what happens. People are definitely changing their votes. You, you screwed everything. And I think I messed it up now. They're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
All right, I'm going to call it. So we're going to say set that doesn't even equal 100%. I don't know how that happened. All right, 78% of you said no. 21% of you said yes. So there's a good amount of people who have now it's 79 and 20, which still doesn't equal 100. Jeez, software these days. Uh, so we're going to definitely be speaking to a lot of people here that have not run any kind of ads off Amazon so or any kind of marketing, I should say. Um, so chances are the reason you're here is you are an Amazon seller who is looking to increase your sales. You're probably tired of these increasing cost per clicks, CPMs, customer acquisition costs, obnoxious competitors coming in and stealing all your stuff. Like, I get it. So there's a good chance you're one on that side. Or you're an e-commerce seller, more, I guess you're all e-commerce sellers, but traditional off e-commerce looking to expand into Amazon and wanting to start to go into that route. So if that's not you, message us, tell us who you are, and we'll make sure we cater a bit of this to you as well. But the time has come. Destiny, you ready to do this? Absolutely. Housekeeping's over? (laughs) Okay. So we're going to go over the seven main marketing strategies. They are very, very high level, but I'm going to give you some real deep insight into how to utilize them and how to drive that traffic directly to Amazon. There's a lot of other marketing strategies that you could potentially do, but from a high level, I wanted to make sure like specifically since about 75, 80% of you haven't done it before that we're solely focused on what are the main ones to start testing out. So the first one we're going to touch on a little bit here, SEO. So might be really obvious, but think about your day-to-day running an Amazon business. You are probably pulling every single report that you possibly can from your own listings, your competitor listings, what you can do from an organic side to make it rank better on Amazon. But what a lot of people forget is that Google actually has 90% of the market share for searches, 46% from a product search. So there's still almost double the amount of traffic that Amazon's got on a Google side. So for you to not look at optimizing uh, from like an SEO perspective for a Google side, instead of just Amazon is a low hanging fruit that you really could miss. You're, you could be missing out on. So let me kind of clarify what I mean here. Cause there's a few different things that you can do. You launch a product on Amazon. You obviously all know that you're going to get your own URL for your specific listing or maybe your specific storefront. There's going to be certain keywords that you start to rank for. Amazon is obviously one of the largest websites at all. So it's going to rank well in itself. So there's a couple things that you can do. The easiest thing you can do, assuming that you don't have any kind of presence off Amazon. So you don't have a blog, you don't have a website, you have nothing. You can start looking into getting backlinks to that listing. So there's a few different ways you can do that. The most obvious is you can use uh, certain platforms, like whether it's SEMrush or Respana or Ahrefs, or there's a billion different SEO software platforms out there. Look into articles, websites that are discussing things about your product, reach out to them and work with them to see if you can get a link to your product. The more links you get, it's basically you saying to Google, hey, all these people are referencing my product So it seems like a reputable link. So the link starts to go up the rankings. It's a very traditional off-page approach. There's a few other things you can do. So I'm going to list a bunch of different uh, software platforms that you can look into. I'm in no way, shape, or form affiliated with any of them because if I was, I'd give you an affiliate link and I don't have one. So I'm just going to tell you. So another thing you can look into is a software called SEO Surfer or Surfer SEO. I can never remember which way it is. But you can actually input an article or a page of any kind into SEO Surfer tie it next to, let's say, two or three other articles that are outranking it. And it will tell you the extra terms that you need, uh, extra images, heading tags, et cetera. And you can actually write that copy, put your product link in that copy and provide it to that article, to that website. A lot of times people reach out and they'll just want a backlink. But if you actually give them a data-driven decision around getting a backlink to that article, or I'm sorry, to your product listing, they're much more likely to add it in there. So by doing stuff like that, you can get more and more backlinks to your listing or to your storefront, whatever it is you're trying to do to get it ranked better on Google. The other side of it, which I'm a little bit bigger of a fan of, if you have your own website, even better. If not, at least develop a blog because you can actually start to write articles around things that are relevant to your product. So let's say you're selling uh, fishing gear and let's say you sell a fishing rod. Well, you want to pull in people that are interested in fishing right? So it doesn't have to be necessarily interested in a fishing rod. So you can write countless articles on fishing 
and then just mention your rod and have as many backlinks as possible. But the benefit being that your blog will actually start to rank better as well, in which case people will come to your blog. You can put in custom imagery in there and send them directly to your listing. So there's a whole organic approach that you could actually take to get people to come to your listing organically from Google and get Google to rank it better. To answer a couple questions here, uh, David, the name I mentioned was SEO Surfer or Surfer SEO. I can never remember which way it is. Um, and Michelle, yes, we will have a recording of the webinar at the end of this sent out. Number two, social media ads. Pretty obvious. I'm sure most of you have probably thought about this in the first place, but there's a few different things that you can think about from a social side. Amazon really likes when you drive traffic from off Amazon. They get all really happy, like, yay, thank you for sending us traffic. However, it can actually still hurt your organic ranking if you're sending bad traffic and they're not converting. So what you do want to do from a standard uh, social ads perspective is make sure that your social ads are optimized correctly. Make sure you're targeting correct interests or lookalike audience or using the right creative copy, et cetera. But I digress. The nice part about doing this, and one of the things that we'll do at the end here is show you how to tie it all together. But for all aspects of this, whether it's social ads, SEO, any of the other stuff we're going to go through, you do still benefit from your brand referral commission if you're using uh, Amazon's attribution. So you can actually get your 10% kickback of making sure that when you're driving this traffic. However, the nice thing about social ads is if you think about the product, if your product is either highly competitive or it's a new market, or maybe it's just like kind of confusing about what the differences are, that means that your product's going to require a higher level of education. When you're on Amazon and Destiny and her team are working our magic and they're getting as much traffic as they can to your listing, there's still only so much that you can provide on a listing, right? You have your title, your bullet points, you have your product description, or it's probably hidden by A+, plus, and then you have all your images and hopefully a video or two in there. But unless they go through all of that content, it can sometimes be tough for someone to actually take in. From a social perspective, you can educate them as time goes on at a significantly lower cost per click than almost any other platform. The at Dustin, do you know what the average cost per click is on Amazon? I don't know. If For I'm our brands, it's around on upwards of $2, but we are in a lot of competitive categories. I saw a screenshot today. I posted to promote the webinar, a $39 CPC. That's nuts. <laughs> so Facebook's average cost per click, last I looked at this, which was about a year ago, so it might have gone up a little bit, was seven. So it's almost half of that to drive that same type of traffic from off Amazon. Uh, Ryan's saying it's 89 cents in 2022. Well, Ryan, yours was easier than Destiny's brands. Um, but the nice thing is here too, is that you can reach a different audience, right? So the audience may not be aware of your product. So this is a very top of funnel approach that allows you to get in front of your different, uh, any kind of different audience so that you can make sure that you're starting to showcase that product. And the nice thing is you can start to build that audience over time, start to develop your own following, which will be very beneficial when you go to exit, which I will touch on a little bit in a little, a little while here too. Search ads, not as inexpensive. Uh, they tend to be a little, or at least from a Google side, they tend to be in line, if not a little bit higher actually than what Amazon is. Mainly because the biggest problem is if you're driving traffic uh, from a Google ad to, let's say, a listing or to your storefront, the biggest problem you're going to have there is that Amazon isn't talking to Google to tell you if it converted or not. So you can only do a maximized clicks campaign. That will actually keep your cost per click very low. However, it's also going to drive a lot of people that while they were searching for a specific term, we don't know if they're willing to convert right away or not. So there are some nice ways of if you go down the route of like actually having a website, you send them the website, teach them a little bit, and then let them go to Amazon or if you do a landing page, et cetera. But the real nice thing about this is that it's 46% more product searches. So if we call it an even 50%, we can basically say that Amazon and Google are even in terms of products, right? So that means there's an entire second search engine that has almost the exact same amount of people that you could drive directly to Amazon from off Amazon. The biggest problem, as I mentioned, though, is that it's difficult to tell Google if it's converted or not. So I usually suggest you want to have a landing page in there and then you can track button clicks or you can have your website and actually use shopping ads 
And then from there, you can also have an Amazon available on Amazon button or buy with prime, which we'll touch on as well. And actually track that, uh, basically that button click as an event. If I'm going too fast, someone just yell at me. <laughs> um, influencer marketing. I love influencer marketing. I know that a lot of people get burnt by it and it happens all the time. And I understand why, because if you're not approaching the influencer in the right way, you're not actually having a, a real solid foundation or, or any kind of like even just light agreement in place. Sometimes you might send them a product and they don't do anything. Like that's why developing those initial relationships can sometimes be a pain. The biggest problem that it solves is if you're running, let's say social ads yourself. If I came up to you and I kept saying, hey, I'm awesome, I'm awesome, talk to me, I'm awesome. You'd be like, this guy's obnoxious and he's probably not that awesome. But if Destiny came to you and Destiny was like, Andrew's awesome, you guys should talk to him. And Destiny was as big of an influencer as she is, you'd be like, okay, like I'm, who is this guy? He must know what he's talking about. So the nice thing is that when you use an influencer, you don't come off as biased. You're letting someone else spread your message. Now, I know most people, especially everyone who's on this call, we're in the industry. So we know that that's not necessarily how that works. Chances are they got the product for free or you paid them or whatever. The average consumer most likely understands that as well, but it still comes off as they know that most influencers are picky about who they're willing to work with. So even though they're getting paid for it, they know that there is probably some accountability behind they might actually like the product. So being able to do that also definitely helps you build your audience a lot more and start to develop a larger following on social media so that as time goes on, it makes life a lot easier. But it does really allow you to drive that traffic directly to Amazon. And then the nice thing too about the influencer side with Amazon specifically is the, the uh, influencers that work with Amazon that are signed up on the Amazon affiliate program are super easy to find because A, you can actually look in uh, Amazon's creator connections and see who you've been working with, but you can also just do a search of any kind of hashtag around Amazon or on sale on Amazon or Amazon finds or something like that and get an understanding of who is consistently pushing Amazon product. And then you're just going straight to influencers that only work with Amazon. Those are the easiest ones to work with. Plus Amazon loves influencer marketing. They're always touting like, oh, you should try this. Email marketing, very straightforward, basically impossible unless you have a list. So there's a few different things that you can do. This one's kind of a two-tiered approach, right? If you don't already have a list, then you're kind of having a little bit of trouble there. You have no one you can email. So what you want to do is you want to figure out some way to start to develop an email list. One thing that you could do is let's say you run social ads and the social ad is actually a lead form where someone clicks on a, on a, on the link and it actually just opens up a form in Amazon or I'm sorry, in Facebook, they fill out the form and then all of a sudden they get a 10% off email that goes to your Amazon. So you have an automated flow set up of these different emails that are automatically giving this promotion that can then send people directly to Amazon. Now, if they filled out that form on Facebook, then they got your email and went to the Amazon to make that purchase. They are much more likely to actually make that, make that purchase. So you'll be driving off Amazon traffic that's extremely relevant and extremely likely to uh, actually convert because you've given them a discount for it. So there's a great way to start to build your email list that way. Then once you've actually started to develop that email list, one of my favorite things to do for product launches is to leverage all of these different things, but definitely email marketing because you can do a very specific campaign to people that have joined your email list, give them an exclusive promotion for your product that you've recently launched on Amazon. So when you're in that, like, what is it like 30 or 60 day, um, like kind of like a honeymoon period when Amazon lets your rankings go up because you're a new product, shove as much traffic as you can towards it, do a big promotion towards it. And we'll actually start to bring that organic ranking up and keep it there. So once you've kind of gone outside that honeymoon period, it don't, doesn't come down as fast. Plus, you can use the Amazon attribution, still get your brand referral bonus. You can do that with anything, with any of these clicks. You can track it from wherever you're setting the traffic. So flawless way to do it. The other way is your own website. This one's pretty controversial. <laughs> Every time I bring this one up, I get yelled at by someone. Uh, in fact, uh, I did a talk about this where, Destiny, where I uh, saw you at um, Helium 10's uh, Cell Scale Summit S3 thing. 
I sure enough had a whole presentation on this and had someone come up to me. He's like, Hey, great presentation. It won't work. And then you just walked away. And I was like, okay, thanks champ. Uh, so wrong. It does work. I see it work all the time. In fact, this is a screenshot of someone we work with who it works for. So there's a few different ways you can approach this. You can add a button on your site, just like I have a screenshot of here. And usually we do it directly below the add to cart button. And it says available on Amazon and you can click on it and it takes them directly to the listing. Biggest problem with that. Uh, really you're sending the traffic to Amazon. You can't really tell if they convert it or not. If you do Amazon attribution or obviously Amazon attribution is going to be the best way to tell on the Amazon side if they've converted, but to tell any of your other marketing initiatives, whether they've converted or not, it's very difficult. Usually what we do in this scenario is on the button itself, you can use Google Tag Manager or you can just cut hard code it in where you add an event code to the am available on Amazon button. That will then tell Google Analytics or Google Ads or Facebook Ads or wherever you're running it, how many people clicked on that, ad, on that button from whatever ad or whatever strategy you had in place. That will tell you what's starting to work the best. So to give you an example for this uh, site right here, we're doing a ton of Google Ads for them right now. They saw an increase in conversion rate on their add to cart button simply because that available on Amazon button was there. But I will also say that they get an obscene amount of clicks on that available on Amazon button. So they get all the traffic gets sent straight to their listing. And that's how we know, like we've been able to educate the consumer on the website and then they just chose to shop on Amazon. Now, of course, I've been doing that strategy for five, six years at this point. And then luckily, I think it was like, what, a year ago, Buy With Prime came out. So now Buy With Prime is out. Uh, I know we're, I think, I think Destiny, you guys work with Buyer Prime too, right? Beautiful. We do, yes. Yeah, so both Destiny and I are like a handful of companies that actually work with Buyer Prime all the time. I know there's not a lot of them because it's still kind of beta testing right now. The nice thing I like about Buyer Prime is that it does give you all of the information. So if I spend a ton of money driving traffic to this listing or this product page, I should say, and they click on that available on Amazon button and they go there, I don't have their data. I have pixeled them. So now I can create that as a segmented audience and run ads to them because I know that they were interested in Amazon. The nice thing about Buy With Prime is that not only will I get all their information and I can put them into their own segmented list so that I know I have a whole list of people that prefer to shop on Amazon, I can also segment them by putting a pixel onto the buy with prime button. The, the other thing that I really like about the buy with prime button is that it does have a geo targeting aspect to it. So when someone lands on your page, it will change the copy on there and tell them when they can expect their order, just as if you were to do it on Amazon. So if just like you go on Amazon, it says like, Hey, expect to get this tomorrow based on your zip code. It still says that on your website. So I've seen great conversion rate improvements for both the button and for the site as a whole. And the thing that all of us are going to love about buy with prime is that your FBA fees are usually what 15, 20% somewhere in there, depending on what you're selling right now, at least last time I spoke to our rep hard 3%, that's it. So there's no other fees outside of it. You're not paying anything else too crazy, ridiculous to Amazon outside your typical fulfillment, et cetera. Um, and I'll touch on this in a little bit, but we are doing, Another webinar in May with Amazon specific to buy with Prime on how to leverage it, all the benefits that come with it, and how that whole thing works. I will not be inviting anyone from Shopify because they will get mad at me. <laughs> um, last one I wanted to touch on here before we get into all the like how to bring it all together. Direct mail. Now, don't don't knock direct mail. I know most people hate direct mail. They're like, you've got to be kidding me. Every time I bring up direct mail to us, uh, anyone. They're like, no, what, what year is this? There's a theory behind why direct mail works now. And basically it kind of comes down to a little bit similar to what people are saying about Facebook reels. So Facebook reels has actually started to get a lot of interest mainly because there's not a lot of people doing it at all. And yet there's still a lot of people on Facebook. So there's so much less competition that the cost to be there is less, the impressions that you get are less because there's just so much real estate available. So many people think that direct mail died off that so many people stopped doing direct mail. So if you actually start doing direct mail and you do it good, you can actually get in front of a pretty nice size audience. 
Now that also means that you have your QR codes you can do that send them directly to Amazon. You could send them to a landing page if you want to go in that, that direction. But if you can actually gather a list of addresses where you can drive that traffic directly to Amazon, you can use your QR code or whatever link you want to do so that you can also get your attribution, you can get your brand referral commission from it. The nice thing about it is direct mail actually averages a higher rate than email does because so many people are emailing now. So yes, when you go to your mailbox, if you get a handful of like ridiculous flyers, you probably throw them away, but you do skim through them really quick. If email, you think about if you get a handful of like horrible newsletters you don't want to read, you don't even open it. You just delete it. So you're actually forcing your brand in front of them. You're forcing the messaging in front of them. And it is actually, if you do it correctly and you add your branding to it and you make it really enticing, it actually can work very, very well and can actually cost less than some email platforms, depending on how big your list is and how many people you're sending out. So it actually can have a higher ROI than email. I always say though, with this thing, it's not something that I say like, Hey, every month you should send out this massive uh, list and, you know, do a big thing around it, but you could actually go through and do like for a campaign or send them directly to Amazon, uh, like just in Q4 or something along those lines so that you're actually just having some kind of reason around it. Then once they get there, destiny knocks them down. And so I'm going to let, I'm going to let destiny take this area while I try to breathe for a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Deep breaths, drink some water. We'll be good to go. I got it. (laughs) All right. So one of the reasons we really wanted to layer in display here is one, I think it is a hot topic in the Amazon seller community because a lot of people don't fully understand what it is. It's also a huge focus on Amazon's end. And it's a way to somewhat circumvent the high cost you have on PPC. So as everyone knows what we've talked about is when you're considering Amazon PPC, it really comes down to real estate. And those premium placements on the page are real estate that people are a lot willing to pay a lot of of money for. So earlier I mentioned that we see $40 CPCs frequently in the supplement space. And when I say frequently, I mean on a general day-to-day, we will see a $40 CPC because that's a billboard ad. That first placement on the page is an absolute billboard. Now, the problem is, again, if you lower your bids, you're just not getting a lot of traffic. So there's kind of a few things that we can do on our end with DSP to still make that make sense. The first big thing is using remarketing strategies. And you can run remarketing through both sponsored display or DSP. And the value of that remarketing strategy is, let's say you're paying for the clicks on PPC or you're doing one of Andrew's strategies and you're going out and you're driving a ton of additional traffic to your listing. Well, as we know, not 100% of that traffic is going to convert. A lot of people will land on your listing and then maybe get distracted or go somewhere else. So we want to continuously serve them an ad even after they potentially leave Amazon. So let's say they go to Amazon and they go to IMDb or they leave Amazon and they go to Twitch or they go watch a TV show on Prime TV, something like that. Amazon sponsored display and Amazon DSP allows us to continually serve an ad to that person within our own set regulations. So we don't have as much control on sponsored display. It's more of a automated solution to remarketing. But on DSP, we can, you know, we can choose our frequency. We can say, hey, we want to serve an ad to this person after they viewed our ad this many times and within this time frame. That helps us increase our overall efficiency. So that's kind of one of the biggest things that we really look at with sponsored display and DSP is how can we utilize remarketing to improve our efficiency and lower our overall cost per acquisition? Now, I'm not going to dive in too much into the differences, but sponsored display is pretty much a watered down version of DSP. It is perfect for brands who are a little bit nervous around display and they're not 100% sure how to implement. Maybe they don't have as much money to spend. Always recommend starting with sponsored display. Now, DSP is like a Tesla relative to a Honda Accord. DSP is insane amounts of power. All of that customer data that Amazon's withheld from us They give you in DSP and they allow you to target based on that data. So that's kind of my simple differentiation, the two. But if we want to switch slides now, I don't know if I have control over that. Yes. I got you. So, yeah, as you can see here, there's also another 
power asset with using DSP. And that is our ability to run a similar strategy to what Amazon or what Andrew has been speaking to with Amazon is we're going to go out and capture those customers. So if we're using sponsored display or DSP for awareness or consideration, we're able to run ads that go off platform and bring a customer to us. And what I mean by that is let's say I'm selling chapstick. Well, on PPC, you have to wait for someone to type in chapstick. And then you show them an ad, right? You're waiting on that customer to come to you. They have a very high purchase intent. With DSP, we can do something along the lines of, hey, let's target everyone who bought Carmex 90 days ago. Let's serve them an ad, right? And those costs can actually be quite a bit cheaper than the CPCs that we see on Amazon PPC. It just has to be ran in a very controlled fashion because as David mentioned here, DSP can be expensive. That's because you have a lot of your big enterprise brands that are spending a lot of money on awareness. They're running commercials, you know, they're, they're doing OTT and things like that. But DSP does not have to be expensive. DSP is typically a five to $10,000 spend minimum. But if you're running it in a very granular fashion, it can be very, very controlled. It's just a little bit more disruptive. It's another way to go off platform and drive traffic to your listing. So we view it a lot more similar to like a meta ad, right? You're disruptive. You're taking someone who's scrolling Facebook, stopping them from scrolling and then forcing them to buy your product. DSP is very similar. As you can see in the screenshot below, you can see you have Gatorade running their, you know, new, I think it's Twitch, their new Twitch product or something along those lines. You have Rockstar and you have the Mountain Dew Energy. They're taking a custom creative, they're serving it on Amazon or off Amazon in order to bring customers into their funnel. So it's again, very similar to some of the strategy, strategies Andrew's talking about where you're disrupting a customer. They're not necessarily on Amazon ready to purchase, but we're able to use all of the shopper data Amazon has, which makes it incredibly powerful. On the next slide, we're gonna talk about a little bit of the bottom of the funnel strategies that I was alluding to, remarketing. This is probably one of the number one best things you can do if you are investing in any of these external traffic strategies. Because again, remarketing allows us to go off Amazon and continually serve an ad to someone. The flaw of it is it's potentially not gonna increase top line sales as much as moving up the funnel because you've already paid to drive that customer to your listing. What we're doing is providing additional support to make sure that customer lands on our listing and then ends up converting. With a strong remarketing strategy, we typically see a ROAS anywhere of like $3 to $10 if you have a high price point product. Uh, so it can be incredibly, incredibly efficient. But again, it's, it's more about lowering your overall ACoS, improving your ROAS when you're only running remarketing and making sure that customer that you already acquired goes and converts. Um, some of the questions in the chat are around like just general DSP things. So typically it's five to $10,000 in spend a month. If you work with Amazon, they usually require you to spend a minimum of $35,000 a month because they don't like running granular strategies like an agency <laughs> could provide you, right? Amazon's not a managed agency. So they only like working with the biggest brands and providing them with the best support. But if you work with an agency, we can start with typically five to $10,000 in spend. Um, your results are going to be dependent on your product as with anything. So the products that typically do best with display or DSP is anything with a high lifetime value. If you have a lot of repeat purchasers, if you sell chapstick or protein or food or toilet paper, it's going to do really, really well for you. Or if you have a high price point product. So let's say you have a $100 to $200 product. Let's pretend that we're a customer shopping on Amazon. You're going to take a little bit more time to check out. You're going to think about it. You're really going to, you're going to go ask your partner. You're going to check your bank account. You're going to check your finances, right? So that's where DSP is fantastic for, again, reminding that person that they need to go ahead and check out. So those are the brands I would say typically do best with a display and a DSP strategy but it can be super flexible. And if you have any other questions, there's a million things we could dive into when it comes to DSP, DSP and display. And I didn't want to you know, take over this webinar. So drop them in the chat and we'll try to get to them. But yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, we should have some time here. 
And I got another poll for you. <clears throat> so I would really be interested to hear uh, which traditional digital marketing channel is working the best for you right now. That could be any, it doesn't have to be going to Amazon. It could just be going to your website or if you're only doing, you know, Amazon right now, obviously there's an option there for you're not doing any. I'm just super curious about like what's everyone's kind of catering to the most right now. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is we're going to touch on like, how does all of this come together? Cause that's, that's, that's personally like, that's the part where I go, yay. Like, I, I love that part. I get so excited about how they all work together. Cause a lot of times the issue will be like, okay, we went through this big old list of stuff. I'm going to start with SEO or I'm going to start with social. And you have to really understand the platform and the strategy to know what other platforms and strategies might be affecting it. Like Google's really great. Facebook's really great, but Google and Facebook together are amazing. So there's different ways based on where they're at in the funnel that we're going to touch on here. But it looks pretty even with the one exclusion of a lot of people getting a lot of success on the influencer and affiliate marketing side, which is, is pretty nice to hear. Usually that's not the case. A little disappointing that zero for retention in email marketing. That's uh, that I did not expect. Usually that one's like way up there. Interesting. You know, something we've seen a lot on our end is running Google ads to Amazon, but as a ranking strategy. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we've been in the process of working to implement um, with like pixel me. And the way we're doing it is again, we're utilizing the same attribution methodology, but rather than just using it for additional traffic, we're using it to track organic rank increases because organic rank strategy used to be, you know, outside of TOS doing giveaway search, find buy and things like that. And then Amazon was like, Hey, this isn't allowed. So we've seen a lot of people using tools like pixel me to basically track the organic ranking and then overlaying it with brand share percentage and search query performance. So they can say, hey, you know, I set aside $3,000 for this Google search keyword driving to Amazon. You know, I only got a return of $3,000, but my organic rank improved from number 10 to number four. So my overall velocity improved as well, making it a profitable campaign. Beautiful. Yeah, looks like influencer marketing search makes sense. I get it. So let's talk a little bit about how this stuff comes together, right? So we discussed a bunch of stuff. So we went through SEO and, and right after this, we'll get into the giveaway and we'll go through all the Q and A and stuff. So just bear with me here. Well, I want to, I kind of want to pull this together. So we talked about the SEO search ads, social ads, uh, just traditional social marketing, influencer marketing, retention, marketing, direct organic social audiences, and obviously leveraging DSP to get them all together. Right. So the one thing, <clears throat> excuse me, is that always blows my mind is when I speak with aggregators, if you are selling your business, which tends to be where everyone wants to go eventually, right? So you're selling your Amazon business. If you are solely on Amazon, Amazon only, you usually can exit between a two to three X EBITDA. Tends to be where you're at. You clear a 10 million mark, it gets a little bit higher. You can get in that three to four range. If you are also off Amazon, so you've built a Shopify site or any other site or anything along those lines, you've developed a social following, you've developed an email list, you basically have brought maybe organic traffic in. So again, so you have additional assets to be able to leverage and another company be able to leverage. You can typically exit for a three to five X EBITDA before you break that 10 million range. Then when you break that 10 million range, it's even higher. So you can actually see almost like a twice as much of a multiple if you actually have a presence off Amazon that can be leveraged from another company. So if you think about it, I don't know why I used the fishing thing earlier. I don't fish that often, but I'll stick with it. So let's just say someone came to me to acquire my fishing company and I was only on Amazon. The biggest benefit is obvious. They get inventory and the profit and like the obvious, right? They do the processes and all that stuff. But let's say they're a hunting company that wants to get into fishing and they know that my audience might also be into hunting. If I also have a good size email list, maybe a website with a bunch of organic traffic that they can throw a pixel on or a social media account with a ton of followers. I'm now that much more interesting to them. So while you see profit as the obvious thing, right? Like it, that's what we're all in it for. At the end of the day, when you go to exit, it's the assets that are actually acquired. So if you think about all the additional things that your company can have, that's an asset, you can exit at a much higher rate. So bringing all this stuff together, 
what you can actually do is find ways to get them to work together. So to me, this is like developing a truly digital omni-channel experience. So taking all of these different, all these different strategies, in my opinion, if this, if it was my call, I would drive them all to a website, but the website would act as a showcase of my product line and where it can be purchased. And I'm going to give the best uh, experience possible that I can to the customer. I obviously want them to shop on my website. I'm going to have pop-ups. I'm going to have every bell and whistle I can possibly do to keep them on my website. So A, I can keep their data. B, that way I can control their experience and I can keep them coming back to the site because the chances are my profit margins are better there. But at the end of the day, I want the customer to be more comfortable. So if they want to go directly to Amazon and shop there because they know they like their return policy and they can get it in two days, let them. Totally fine. Or if they want to do it for buy with Prime or if... We start putting in Walmart buttons or eBay or Wayfair, wherever else you're available. I see D2C websites turning into almost a showcase of here's your product. You can buy it locally here. You can buy it from us right now. You can go to Amazon. You can go to Walmart, wherever that person's most comfortable. And by allowing them to do that, you can actually get that data. So if they click over to Amazon or if they click over to Walmart or eBay from any of these strategies that you did, you can actually start to put them in segmented lists based on the pixel or based on their email address, however you want to do that. And now you know where they're most comfortable. So if you decide I'm going to run a sale on Walmart or I'm going to run, a, I'm doing a product launch on Amazon, you can direct all of your off Amazon marketing strategies directly to Amazon to really get that snowball effect going for that initial product launch. So if you do the Vine program and you do all this stuff outside of it, your initial product launch will skyrocket, keeping your organic ranking high. So when you fall out of that honeymoon period, you don't have so much to worry about. And then when they get there, you let Destiny kick ass doing uh, display ads and doing DSP and making sure that you're staying on top of them. Because if they land on your listing, not everyone's going to convert. You're not going to get a hundred percent conversion rate. If you ever do, please let us know. I'd love to have you do a webinar so I can watch it. But if they don't, you got to do the remarketing. You have to stay on top of them. DSP and, and Desi's whole team does an amazing job at retargeting them. We usually focus on like a social ads retargeting side, or like if you're doing anything for like capturing email and stuff like that, honestly, in my opinion, display ads from Google and Bing, it's if you're solely on Amazon, go through DSP, Google and Bing, you can't really track it as well as you'd like to. So it's better to do it through DSP. Social ads are a different approach, but either way, if you can take all this stuff and bring it all together and get it to work with one another, it's a great way to provide the best experience possible for your customer and start to develop your business into a bigger asset as time goes on. So tracking it all which I know we talked about a little bit here is the Amazon attribution. So I know someone had a question about that earlier. Um, The Amazon attribution, which is, I think it also had another name at one point, didn't it? Do you remember if it did or not? Didn't have another name? I thought it could have sworn it had another name. But either way, it's Amazon attribution now. And so you get your brand referral bonus. So any traffic that you drive from off Amazon, you can set different campaigns and stuff in there. You can get your 10% uh, off your price so that that way, all this traffic, they actually are ben- they're giving you a little bit of a benefit for driving traffic directly to Amazon, taking some of those costs away from you. So if you think about, Destiny mentioned, uh, let's say it's a $2 cost per click on Amazon. Let's say you get the traffic from Facebook. It's actually a dollar per click. So you've cut your cost per click in half, plus you get 10% back. You can actually see a much better ACOS or preferably tacos, depending on which direction you're looking at it from an off Amazon perspective than you can from on Amazon because of how competitive it's got. The other side of that being Google Tag Manager. So you can put all the event codes on any button you want so you can be able to track each of the individual pixels to see who's coming from where and where they clicked and what happened after they clicked. And then buy with Prime, the nice thing is that not only can you do the same stuff through Google Tag Manager, but you can keep all of their information. Woo. So what's next? Went through all the stuff, went through the strategy, went through how to implement it, went through a tech stack, all that fun stuff, which means we have to do the fun stuff now. So the next webinar, real quick, while I have everyone, uh, we've got another one in, uh, was it May 25th with Amazon? And we're going to be talking about Amazon's Buy with Prime. So if anyone wants to join it, I just put the event uh, link in the chat. So feel free to register there. It's not for another month. So we've got a little while to go. Um, but we're going to dig a little bit deeper into these off Amazon strategies, but a lot deeper into the buy with prime functionality in itself and how to leverage it. 
And then of course it's my moment where I try to sell you all a ton of shit. So, uh, obviously here at Blue Tusker, we're a full service marketing company for e-commerce sellers. We do this stuff all day long, all screenshots and stuff are from clients that we work with right now, where we focus a lot on developing these omni-channel marketing strategies for Amazon sellers and just traditional D2C sellers that aren't on Amazon and help them. We basically act as like an outsourced marketing department. So if anything today was super interesting to you, please feel free to reach out. Or if you're really interested in DSP, Destiny's a lot better at that than I am. So she'll be a lot, she'll be the one you'll want to go to around the DSP and retargeting side on Amazon. And then of course I have to have something that I offer you. So all this stuff that we talked about today, it all has to come together and there, it, it makes it very difficult to track that kind of stuff. And there's also stuff from your social side, CRO stuff, SEO stuff, all this different stuff. So we decided we're going to take every single report and every spreadsheet that we use as a company and develop it into one area. And so we always have that stuff on our site, but I wanted to make sure that everyone had the opportunity here today to walk away with that. So there is uh, an offer here. Um, we'll give you 50% off on these. I think it'll bring it to like for all 10 reports. I mean, it'll bring it way down. I can't remember what it's at right now because we always change it. Um, but if you're interested, use the uh, code off AMZ50. That'll get you all set up. If you have any questions, you can also message me. I put the link in the chat. The, the uh, offer thing is up there too. Um, but that will be where we get into our Q&A side. And there's a lot of them. So, Destiny, you ready to do this? Oh, I am ready. This is my favorite section of any webinar. Okay. So, good. We've still got 10 minutes here. So, let's go through this stuff. So, real quick on this side of things, before we touch on some of these questions, I did put the link to the marketing reports in there. And then here is the link for the Amazon listing optimization stuff that I mentioned earlier. If you want to be enrolled for the uh, listing optimization, the A-plus content stuff, feel free to shoot me an email at andrew at bluetusker.com. Everyone who emails me, I will put you into a drawing, and I'm just going to pick two uh, from some randomizer thing. But let's go through some of these questions. Okay. DSP, so you touched on that one uh, about usually around the five to $10,000 a month. If you go through an agency, because if you go through Amazon, it's, what do you say, it's like 30, 35? Yes. Oh, God. So Amazon does not want to deal with that at all. Um, okay. Alex asked, is there a way to track the different traffic when sending them to Amazon? Uh, Amazon direct mail website. Yeah, yeah. So if you use, if you use the Amazon attribution, you can set up different campaigns in there and you can actually separate, separate them based on where you're sending the traffic from. So it'll just be a different, it's kind of like using a UTM code. So you'd be able to track it all that way. It'll all send it into the same, into the same platform. You can read it all from there. If you're talking about from like, let's say a Google Analytics side or maybe from within like one of the platforms, if you do, if you have a button on your site, you can do Google Tag Manager and then you can read all that source information within Google Analytics or within Google Ads or Facebook Ads, et cetera, whichever one you're using. But from an on Amazon side, Amazon attribution, as long as you make a campaign for each individual strategy that you're doing, you can track it all there. Thomas asked, uh, do you know any ROI focused direct mail companies to work with? ROI focused. What a very, I love <laughs> good, good ad. Um, the one that I like using is Postalytics. They integrate nicely with um, Shopify and with, uh, uh, and with HubSpot. But from if you're just doing direct mail and sending it straight to Amazon, you're better off tracking the QR code. So if you use one of the QR generators, they'll tell you how many people like actually use the QR code. That'll be the best way to be able to tell who actually used the QR code. Then if they use the link on the QR code, you can track it through Amazon's attribution. Otherwise, what you can do is do it through um, your own website and track it that way. And then there they can, they can track that stuff. Uh, brand commission, uh, Quintisha asked this. Yeah, 10% would be the brand referral bonus. So actually using Amazon's Amazon attribution is what just gives you that referral bonus. So they give you a bonus. And if you send the traffic to an individual listing, but they purchase something else that's still your product, they give you the halo effect of it too. So you still get the 10% no matter what. 
Eric mentioned buy with Prime is now 3% or $1.50. Yes, actually, that is a good point. I did hear that. I was actually told from buy with Prime, and Destiny, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it's like if your product is under $25 or $30 or something, it, it's not as lucrative as it is. And it's US only right now from everything that we've heard. I think the one call out I would add there is you can apply it to certain products. So if you want to test it, dip your toes in and see how well it improves your conversion rate, it's pretty low risk right now. And again, the whole value add of buy with prime is being able to improve your conversion rates and make sure again, all of the traffic we are paying to send to our website right now converts. So it may yeah. be worth testing for that alone. Uh, Daniel, coupon code, I just put it in there for you. It's the off AMZ 50. Uh, Muhammad, after ChatGPT, did you see any ads? I'm shocked that this was the first time ChatGPT was brought up today. I, was, I would have Seriously. expected that. I have barely go 10 minutes anymore. Uh, I have actually. So I've seen some real nice improvements with ads on Bing, specifically since ChatGPT launched. In fact, we have someone we were working with where we were running their ads for, oh, we were running their ads on Microsoft for like two years or something. And then as soon as the chat GPT thing came out within like two weeks, much better results than what they were getting before. And I actually think that that's going to continue to be a thing, at least for the foreseeable future. Plus I still always say, don't sleep on Microsoft. It comes, Bing comes preloaded on like almost every computer that's sold with the exclusion of Mac. So I always say it never hurts to give it a shot. Um, can a brand manage its own DSP or does it have to be through a partner and agency? I guess you could, right? But you got to spend like, what'd you say? Like 30, 35,000 a year of a month? Um, not quite. Typically the only people that are allowed to have seats are spending like over, I would say probably $10 million. Now oh. there is a little bit of wiggle room there. If you know someone who knows someone who knows someone and hit a certain threshold, then yes. But the whole reason like DSP is not available is it is very complex. And if they just rolled it out to everyone, people would hemorrhage a lot of money. Um, but that's where sponsored display is the byproduct of that. They're opening up the OTT side. You can now run video ads off platform. They're opening up the audience, the contextual um, within sponsored display. It's just like a a little safety gate version. It's like a little bowling alley with rails. So that way you can't do anything crazy and hopefully can't spend too much money on sponsored display. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. I could see how that would get out of hand. Um, Alex asked, do you need to add codes anymore if you're using G4? Uh, I still do it through Google tag manager. I don't trust that it's tracking everything. Plus being able to track that event code in other platforms that won't work. So if I want, if I want to tell Facebook when someone clicked on like a buy with prime button or an available on Amazon button or something like that, you still got to use Google tag manager. Uh, customer. Oh, that was you. Oh, you were answering. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, Oh, here we go. If I have a website, what is the advantage of sending them to my Amazon link? If he could just buy it from my website. Very, very <laughs> common question. Okay. <clears throat> so really the bet having an, having that extra like available on Amazon or buy with prime button or whatever it is on Amazon, on your website can actually improve the conversion rate of your own like traditional add to cart button. Right. So like your actual purchase on your website, because it brings credibility to your brand. We're mm -hmm. all guilty of being submersed in this industry day in and day out that we forget that the average consumer has no idea how any of this stuff works. So you'd be shocked at how many like people I talk to that know nothing about what I do. They all think that all of the products on Amazon are just products that Amazon owns and they're selling them. They don't know that other people are doing it. Or if they do, they don't really understand the, the how it works. So if they go to a site and they see that like, oh, it's also on Amazon, they think that it's a very reputable product. So it actually brings a little bit more credibility to it. It also provides a better experience for the customer if they prefer to shop on Amazon. You do probably lose margin if you send them to Amazon, specific depending on how you're fulfilling and what button you're using and all that fun stuff. But I actually think that 
it comes down to the business. There's times where it makes sense and there's times where it doesn't. I think if you have a really lower price point product, it might not be worth it. If you have a higher price point product and you really need to really focus on your customer acquisition cost and you just want to get them to convert, who cares where they convert, especially if you have like a CPG brand or something where there's like a subscription and they need to come and purchase and purchase and purchase, let them buy wherever they want because then they're probably going to come back to you anyway. I would also add that as customers, we are spoiled. I mean, I, I love getting things at my doorstep the day of, and there is a lot of distrust from me knowing how quickly it is to spin up a website and drop ship something where anytime my mom will send me a message and be like, is this a real site? I immediately type it in and I go to like the truth verification sites to make sure, Hey, this site's legitimate. Like there's not a lot of trust in D to C nowadays when you have accessibility to Amazon, which typically, you know, has, you know, immediate refunds. There's no risk in buying something off Amazon when you can go refund anything for free. You don't typically have that on your website. So as Andrew said, even if it's just the subconscious aspect of saying Amazon trusts this site, they're selling that product. It provides a lot more legitimacy to your brand, unless you have the absolute best conversion rate optimized website, which a lot of people think they do. But in reality, they don't. People are still going to trust Amazon over any amazing site that you have. I think we got time for a couple more here. Uh, let's see what's uh, Daniel asked. What are some best practices on how how ad budget to allocate oh, allocating ad budget for DSP and off Amazon ads like the ones we mentioned for a mature brand? And what about for a brand being launched? I'll hop in here real fast. I would say it depends. Um, Amazon PPC is still the highest purchase intent model. I, I would say in all of e commerce. People go to Amazon to buy things. If you type in any search term in Amazon, you're looking to buy. So if you're in a category where you can't afford the cost per clicks of your top keywords, that's when we recommend immediately starting to diversify. So that way you can still drive traffic. Now, if you can afford to do it, diversify anyways, right? But just make sure you're maxing out your PPC first because that purchase intent is absolutely insane. Um, for mature brands, we typically see like PPC being the first immediate allocation. And then when they max out PPC, they immediately go to DSP for the remarketing and the awareness building. And then that's when they also start rolling in the influencer marketing and the Google search ads. But I think if I had to give any piece of advice, it's just make database decisions. Like everything that we do from PPC to Google search is really liquid. So it's easy to set up campaigns and tests. And if it's not better for your brand, move on to the next thing. You don't need to spend $30,000 on every single platform to figure out whether or not it's going to work. Yeah. I'm sure, I don't speak for both Destiny and I, but I'm sure she has the same headache that I have when we get asked this question all the time about what should my budget be? Yeah. Here's the thing. If you're a new, if you're an existing mature brand, that's usually a very easy answer because we can pull your average order value, your cost per click, how much your reach is now, where your ROI is like that. We can figure out if you're a new brand and you're just being launched, asking someone what your budget should be is a, almost a waste of time. What you want to do is you want to allocate a certain amount of budget that you're comfortable with spending to learn for, I would say. I usually want to say like a two to three month range where you're going to go, okay, now I got data. Now I know what's working, what's not working. You can adjust your budget accordingly, but you just, if you're just starting off, it's going to be more about the business and what you're comfortable with spending to learn, not about what we think your ROI is going to be. Cause you don't, you don't know what your conversion rate is. Neither do we. So until you can figure out what your average conversion rate is, your average order value, your cost per click, and then what your return is, it's tough to figure out what a budget should be. And Alex asked, is there any data regarding showing two add to cart buttons um, or like buy with prime? There's, there is a little bit. Uh, actually, I spoke with, I could tell you what I see from the clients that we've done it for. Right. And I see an overall increase in conversion rate, usually around like if they're a typical website on, 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 let's say Shopify average, you're like, I don't know, let's say like a 2%. I usually see it go to like a three, three and a half, not including what's coming through the buy with prime side. Now, most of the time it's available on Amazon because buy with prime just came out. So that data will probably change. 
Amazon has also told me that if you implement buy with prime, you see a, I think he said like a 23% increase in conversion rate. Yeah. So if you're at a 1%, it'll jump to 1.2 kind of thing. However, that's Amazon telling me that. So I always take that with a grain of salt. Um, so I always think it's worth testing. It's an easy AB test because if you set it up through like Google Optimize or if you've got like Optimizely or, or VWO or anything like that, AB test it. Leave what some on the site sometimes, leave it off site. Buy with Prime is completely free to set up with the exclusion of if someone actually purchases something. So I always say it's worth trying. Uh, and then are you better off just putting Buy with Prime? Look, if you're fulfilling directly out of Amazon, it's possible, but it depends on your product line. The, the biggest problem I've seen with Buy with Prime is you can't, uh, you can't buy like two products at once. So if they want to buy a hat and they want to buy a t-shirt from you, they have to buy the hat. Then they have to go to the t-shirt and buy the t-shirt. They can't buy them both at the same time. So that's kind of where like the inability to bundle and all that stuff kind of becomes an issue. Um, however, I wanted to try and keep this to an hour. So I think we're good. I've answered a bunch of your questions. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to email me at Andrew at Blue Tusker. Destiny, are they, are they okay to contact you? 100%. I would add me on LinkedIn and send me a message there. That's where I'm most responsive. Perfect. Everyone who joined us today, obviously, thank you very much. Uh, we will be sending out the replay. I'll shoot everyone an email with all the extra stuff that we talked about today. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact myself or Destiny through our emails or LinkedIn or whatever you want to do. Um, but outside of that, we really appreciate all you joining us. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But otherwise, enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you, guys. See ya.